All right. Okay. Sorry, folks. We're joining you uh, live on uh, Wednesday, August the 12th, uh, 2020, room 111-112 with Pauline Epistles. Sorry, we we're starting a few minutes late. We had a little technical difficulty. We have a new iPad that we're recording through tonight. And uh, so uh, uh, for those of you that are trying to watch Facebook, I'm sorry. For whatever reason, this doesn't have Facebook credentials on it yet. So we're doing live stream only. We'll upload it to Facebook later. I apologize for that. Uh, let me give you some announcements, and then we'll pray and uh, get right into the Word tonight. Uh, remember, uh, Sunday services, uh, one service still at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, we're still no service with uh, children's ministry or nursery yet. Uh, we're working on that, uh, kind of anxiously looking and waiting for uh, any uh, signaling from the governor's office about any changes, uh, maybe going back to phase three. Uh, in, uh, in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, also, um, we have drive through prayer. We did it tonight. Yes, in the rain, we did it. We had three people drive up for prayer. Good. Uh, also, uh, the Global School of Supernatural Ministry for Hampton Roads Campus here at WOW is still accepting applications uh, for the 2020-2021 school year. And we'll be doing that up until the 26th of this month. You may apply online at wowcenter.org or you can contact the church office and uh, ask for Natalie Ashby. Also, we're doing the Zoom room chat on Sundays after the service, uh, Sunday from 12.15 to 12.45, and this is for all those, all are welcome to join that chat uh, with uh, Pastor Russell, Sylvia, this Sunday be with me. Uh, and. Uh, those that uh, are connecting weekly via uh, our app, our website, Facebook, and et cetera, Twitter, Instagram. And then also, uh, sun, uh, I believe it's a Saturday, yes, Saturday, uh, September the 26th, WOW Center will be hosting the return uh, here. Uh, it, it's a national and global day of prayer and repentance. It's going to be held live on the mall in Washington, D.C., uh, but we're going to be simulcasting, live simulcasting the event right here in Sanctuary. And that will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturday the 26th. Uh, you can watch it here. Join us in the Sanctuary. If you do, please register uh, to, for that event. Um, you can do that at the return. If you want to go live and see it live in D.C., you can. there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby that we'll, we'll try to help get some carpools together to do that. But the church is hosting it right here in the sanctuary. And you can just drop in anytime. If you, you can't get to the church, you can also watch it from home. Uh, just go to thereturn.org. And uh, again, I mentioned the carpool sign up is in the lobby as well if you want to actually go to Washington, D.C. Also, um, uh, please go to our website, wildcenter.org or the familyfoundations.org to review, sign, uh, a petition uh, helping us turn um, Virginia uh, around with this uh, stop the snitch state petition. Uh, so we want to we want to kind of uh, turn that around. About uh, we don't want we don't want to stop turning Virginia into a Big Brother surveillance state. And so there's a petition there you can see on our website, and uh, we encourage you to do that. Remember our food pantry on uh, Monday, to, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays, and also uh, Tuesday of each month as well. So uh, if you have any questions about that, you can see me after class or uh, call the church office. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. We have several that are uh, on our prayer list. We, let me pull it up real quick. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, Jedediah, du I always say his last name, Duaya. Uh, is in uh, Norfolk General Hospital. He's had septic shock since last Monday. Mm -hmm. He's on antibiotics. Uh, Pam Simmons, uh, Pam's in our Wednesday night class here. Pam has a cousin that's in Riverside with COVID on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. Nancy Strickland, uh, she's been with us some too. Uh, she has a brother uh, in Centera with COVID. Um, Jack Smith Sr., we found out late this afternoon, has COVID. Oh uh, so, uh, pending, hmm. pending hospitalization. Um, uh, Ellen Tilburg requests a prayer for baby Noah, a newborn 
that was, uh, uh, he came three weeks early. Uh, he's at a Richmond hospital for stomach surgery. Um, Linda uh, Pulley's sister is in the hospital in West Virginia. Um, Michael Utterback of the ministry to Israel um, has requested that we pray for them about flights opening up for Jews around the world trying to make yes. Aliyah yes. Or immigrate into Israel. Mm. And then once they get there, uh, there is a whole host of needs that, that they need. Mm -hmm. uh, just an endless challenge of what they need. Uh, their warehouses are, are empty. Wow. Uh, and uh, mm. they need, they need uh, uh, all kinds of aid. Uh, so he, they're asking for prayer for health and safety for the workers, ministering to those in such a desperate state, and also the, a continual flow of finances. Uh, to remain consistent and new donors so that they can meet the needs. Also, Brother Sam Selvaraj is one of our, Brother Jackson Israel, Brother Sam uh, is our, our missionary that we support in Chennai, India. Um, and uh, he's just really burdened by uh, the people mm -hmm. who are dying every day without Christ. Yep. Uh, there's also been severe lockdowns in, in India mm -hmm. uh, for the COVID and it's really affected their ministries as well. Uh, we want to remember Joe and Susie Clark. Uh, Susie's daughter uh, died. She had stage four cancer, and I uh, want to remember them. The viewing, uh, she lived in northern Virginia, but everything will be held in this area. So the viewing for Donna Elliott will be this Monday from 11 to 4, 11 to 4, Monday at Cook Brothers Funeral Home in Newport News. And then also uh, the service will be held Tuesday at 11 at Cook Brothers, but more than likely it's been limited to 50 people and it'll be a large family. So I, uh, pastor's out of town next week. I'm going to be going to the viewing and just represent the church there. If you would like to join, I'm sure you, you, we would be able to go through the viewing. Also, uh, many of you may remember Keith and Michelle Duncan. Keith and Michelle were our worship pastors before mm -hmm. Pastor Larry. Keith's mom, Michelle, I mean, uh, Maddie, passed away. She was wow. 81, um, um, and uh, she lived in Midlothian, and uh, her funeral uh, is to Friday. It's Friday at 11 uh, at the Victory Tab Church of God in, in Richmond. So uh, remember, remember uh, them. And uh, anybody in the classroom tonight have prayer needs? Everybody okay? Good. All right. Okay. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for yes, Lord. A, a good day. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, Lord, for your blessing, your provision. Yes. Father, Lord Jesus, for life and eternal life, Father, mm. Lord. And, Lord, uh, that, that um, you protected a while. You're protecting our people. You're protecting our families. We thank you, Father, Lord, for uh, just uh, a move, Father, Lord, of, of safety and protection against uh, the illnesses and COVID and other afflictions. We just thank you for that. Lord, we, we do have some on our prayer list that we call before you. We ask that you touch Jedediah and this, uh, the septic uh, shock in his body. We just pray, Father, you heal it in Jesus' name. Touch Tommy Russell with COVID. Touch Duke with COVID. Touch Ramona Carter, Father, Lord Jesus. We pray for Jack Smith Sr. This is Jack's dad. We just pray, God, that you touch him, heal him of this, Lord. Uh, the lung uh, infections and things, the breathing problems. Mm. We just pray you heal in Jesus' name. Jesus. Lord, touch little baby Noah. Lord, his stomach surgery. Not sure what's going on, but we just, you do. And we just commit baby Noah. Hallelujah. To and we just pray for a complete healing. We pray, Lord, that you would touch uh, Jeanette in uh, Morganton, West Virginia. Pray, Father, you touch uh, uh, Oni Pickett's sister. Uh, in, in Florida who is ill. We pray, Father, Lord, that you would touch uh, uh, Jack Utterback and the ministry to Israel. We pray, Father, for financial support. We pray, Father, Lord, that the mm -hmm. flights would open from various countries uh, around the world, specifically Eastern Europe and Russia, Father, Lord, for uh, Jews to be able to make Aliyah to Israel. We pray for Brother Sam and the ministries of, of Echo is called Ministries in, in India. 
We pray, Father Lord, that, that he is so burdened about the needs of many in his country and city that are dying without Christ. And oh, hallelujah. We reach for the gospel. Mm. We pray that you touch Susie and Joe, Father Lord, comfort Susie. This is the third daughter she's lost. Mm. We pray, Father, that you would just touch Susie and Joe as they make arrangements and the services coming up over the, uh, this next week. Comfort them, Holy Spirit. We pray for Keith, Michelle. Yes. His other siblings, Father, and their family, and the passing of his mom. We just pray your peace, comfort, Holy Spirit. These, Lord, that they know she was a vibrant believer. They know, Father, that she loved you, and and so in that mm. regard, her passing yes. is, is is somewhat joyous in that regard. Mm. And they look forward, Lord, to being with her again. Pray, Father, that you would touch us uh, as we go into your Word tonight. Yes. As we look, continue in the in the twelfth chapter of. Second Corinthians and just finalize this lesson and and uh, proceed Father Lord we pray to God that mm. you would give us insight to your word help us to find application that's personal yes, and Lord. Father Lord that it's applicable in, the, in our walk with you and yes. our walk with our, our community around us so we give you praise we give you glory and honor we thank you for your many many blessings in Jesus name Amen, Amen. 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 Alright if you have your Bibles turn to Second Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, we're going to go begin at verse 11, read down through 21, the end of the chapter. And um, uh, last week we began this lesson uh, in sanctuary. Uh, this is lesson number 72. Does everybody have a handout that needs one? Do you need handouts? They're up here. If you if you have it from last, you don't have one. It's fine. So. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I forgot to note it, but um, you're on Roman numeral number two. So just look, find on your your handout Roman numeral number two, his commendation and trust. So uh, what we're looking at here in the 12th chapter is uh, Paul's vision and his thorn in the flesh. So what he's talking about is he's still dealing with his uh, the false apostles, the the super apostles mm -hmm. that he calls them, and He's still dealing with their accusations, and remember, he, he was forced to boast and brag in the 10th chapter. He's still talking about that now, but one of the accusations they made is that they boasted of their, their super spiritual visions and encounters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what's happening is Paul, Paul mentions in this chapter, he mentions a vision that he's had uh, that uh, 13 years ago, that he was out on the, in the backside of the desert where the yes. Lord revealed himself to him. Yes. So he said, okay, I've had that same kind of experience, but I don't go around boasting about those kinds of things. So that's what we're seeing, and then we talked about the thorn in the flesh last week, and that's kind of where we ended the lesson last week uh, in the sanctuary, talking about his thorn in the flesh and how it was to keep him humble. And we ended, I'll back up one slide, we ended that... We were talking about God's grace, and the fact is grace has always been and will always be enough. It'll be sufficient for the task Amen. That's Amen. in front of us. Yes. And one of the other things we said in, in the latter part of that, uh, uh, I believe it was in uh, verse 10, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then... I am strong. So we ended last week's lesson talking about how that Paul recognized that it was in his weaknesses where the strength of the Lord was always found. And the, the super apostles, the false apostles, his accusers, were braggadocious, boastful yes. about yes. their abilities, boast about their talents, uh, and, 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 and they were boasting about their strengths. Paul says, and he, he says, you, you, I, I don't like it. You're, I feel like a fool boasting about this. And uh, it, he, he did not like self-commendation. But if you're going to push me to it, then I'm going to boast, but I'm going to boast in a way that's not Amen. anticipated. Amen. And so he boasts about his weaknesses mm -hmm. because he knew in his weaknesses is where Christ and, and the Lord, he, he found the strength. He blossomed, yes. he bloomed in yes. ministry. It was not his ability, like the super the, apostles were pushing. Go. It was their talent, their ability, their gifting. Right. Right. He recognized that it wasn't him. And so therefore, it, he boasted about his weaknesses, not his strength. Because his weaknesses were his strength. Correct. 
And so let's pick up now with verse 11. So now he's talking about his commendation and trust. You have made me act like a fool, boasting like this. You ought to be writing commendations for me, for I am not at all inferior to these super apostles, <laughs> even though I'm nothing at all. So see, Paul recognizes he knows he's nothing. Okay? All right? But that's the opposite of what the super apostles are saying about themselves. Right. Okay? All right? So when I was with you, I certainly gave you proof that I am an apostle. For I patiently did many signs and wonders and miracles among you. Okay. Now notice, we're going to come back to that signs, miracles, and wonders because they were, they were the super apostles were trying to claim for their own signs, miracles, and wonders. Uh -huh. okay. To bring only, glory to themselves. Right. The only thing I failed to do, which I do in other churches, was to become a financial burden to you. Please forgive me for this wrong. And we talked about this a little bit last week in that the super apostles accused Paul of saying he was not an apostle, he was not a proper leader because he wasn't expecting them to be uh, uh, pay, accepting pay from them uh, or support from them financially. And uh, we're going to hit that real hard in a minute, just a moment. Uh, notice when he says, forgive me for being wrong. In other words, here, we've got a spiritual daddy with his spiritual kids, all right? Does a spiritual parent support the children? Does the spiritual kid support the parent? You, many of you in the room and those of you watching, if you're a parent and you had young children in the home, who supported who? The parent supported the child. Correct. Okay. All right. So that meant that you did what you needed to do to make sure they had what they needed to have. Right. All right. We're going to come back to this illusion in a moment. Uh, in our notes, but Paul's saying, look, I begot you. In other words, I'm the spiritual daddy. You're my spiritual kids. I'm not going to be a burden to you where I'm expecting you to financially support me. Yeah. You're the yeah. growing children. I want to support you. So in other words, other churches supported him while he was doing ministry in Corinth. Yes. Or he worked his own. Yes. To make his own way. Yes. Okay? Notice what he says. Now I'm coming to you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you. In other words, I haven't been a burden to you two previous times. Right. I'm coming to right. visit you again, and I'm telling you up front, I'm not going to be a burden to you then financially either. I don't want what you have. I want you. <laughs> In other words, Amen. what does Paul want? There's, he wants their spiritual side. He doesn't Amen. want their possession okay all right so that tells you something what were the super apostles looking for from the corinthian church possession. their possessions their finances yes their funding, yes okay? yes they didn't care about the people they were looking to line their pockets but it's funny what did they accuse paul of doing ministry for profit okay all right so after all children don't provide for their parents rather parents provide for their children I will gladly spend myself and all that I have for you, even though it seems that the more I love you, the less you love me. All right. Now, some of you admit I was not a burden to you, but others still think I was sneaky and took advantage of you by trickery. All right. That is an accusation by the super apostles. Right. Like to, to, that they made, not toward Paul, but they made that accusation, I mean, excuse me, they made it toward Paul, but they made the accusations to the Corinthian believers in the church, mm -hmm. trying to pull them away from correct. Paul. Correct, correct. Okay? All right, so notice he says, uh, but how? How, 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 did, how would they do this by trickery? Did any of these men I sent to you take advantage of you? No, when Paul couldn't get there, he sent other men. Remember that from earlier in the book. When I urged Titus to visit you and sent uh, our other brother and, with him, did Titus take advantage of you? No, no, for we have the same spirit and walk in the same in each other's steps, doing things the same way. Perhaps you think we're saying these things just to defend ourselves. No, we tell you this as Christ's servant and with God as our witness. Amen. Everything we do, dear friends, is to strengthen you. For I am afraid that when I come, I won't be like what I won't like what I find. Sorry, I'm, I'm, the line of my bifocals is messing me up here. 
Let me start over. Verse 20. For I'm afraid that when I come, I won't like what I find, and you won't like my response. I'm afraid that I will find quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorderly mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm afraid that when I come, God will humble me in your presence, and I will be grieved because many of you have not given up your old sins. You have not repented of your impurities, your sexual immorality, and eagerness for lustful pleasure. Wow. Mm. So, in, in these verses, Paul is giving his commendation. He's talking about how he is uh, uh, commanded and, and how he is trying to commend them uh, and the trust he has. Notice that the Corinthians had really failed Paul. Right? They had not defended him against the attack on his character and on his ministry by these super apostles. Many of them were persuaded against him. Many of their, the, the affection of the Corinthian believers was cooled by uh -huh. these false teachers. Yes. There was a great love and respect between Paul and the Corinthian church, but since the super apostles had come in, there was a cooling of that affection. Mm -hmm. They had gotten cooled back toward their relationship with him, and he felt it, and he could sense that. Notice that, here's the thing, the Corinthian church was listening to his critics, to Paul's critics. They were listening yeah, yeah. Uh, to the uh, false apostles. Now, because his spiritual kids did not take his side, then he was forced to defend himself or to commend himself. So he had to give his own credentials. They didn't speak up for him, so he is forced to speak up for himself. Mm -hmm. So against his better judgment, he boasts, and he says, I've made a fool of myself. In other words, he didn't like boasting. He didn't want to boast. Uh, and yet he's put in a position where he has to. But notice, how does he boast? Totally different in the way in which yes. the yes. accusers did, his yes. critics did. Yes. Okay. So the commendation of the Corinthians would have spared him all this foolishness. Exactly. He wouldn't have That's had right. to have written right. half of chapter 10 and all of chapter 11 if the Corinthian yeah. church believers yeah. had just stood up and defended Paul against right. these critics. Right. Okay. right. Though they did not take his side, most of them, he was confident that because of grace and of the power of God, in no way was he inferior to these super apostles. Amen. Remember, he Amen. used that term loosely, tongue in cheek. Yeah. Okay. Paul knew that he was really superior to them simply because his superiority was in Christ. Amen. Christ's superiority. He was weak, but Christ was strong in him. Mm -hmm. Now, in chapter 12, verse 12, we see the real marks of an apostle. All right? The opponents had claimed miracles. All right? We know that the true signs or marks of a true apostle are miracles. Mm -hmm. All of the disciples of Christ who became apostles of Christ after his death they all perform miracles. It was a sign of a true apostle. Now, these were described by Paul as signs, wonders, and miracles. In other words, a genuine relationship. Genuine relationship. <clears throat> so, in other words, it would be a mistake to sharply distinguish these one from another. Trying to distinguish a sign, distinguish a wonder, distinguish mm -hmm. a miracle. Mm -hmm. They all accompany uh, a true prophet, a true apostle. Right. So, notice now, we'll give a little definition. Signs are events which are seen to have spiritual significance, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they reveal the grace of God at work. Okay? Now, wonders and happenings uh, that are astounding and extraordinary in co uh, uh, yes. character and nature. Yes. That's yes. a wonder. Wow. Never seen that happen before. Mm -hmm. That's a wonder. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, miracles stress what? The power of God. The power of God. Mm -hmm. They and, and and usually you see miracles in the in the area of physical healing. Okay, it can be in other other ways. Too. Right, right. But usually it's demonstrated. Uh, especially you see it in, you know, it, it's kind of hard to see. You know, people have financial miracles. But who can see that? The, the Primarily those that receive it. Because their, their bank account's not open to the public. Right. But if somebody's ill, 
somebody's got an ailment, a cancer, a disease, or like Smitty in his testimony, you know, Smitty had a powerful miracle of healing and restoration by God. Mm -hmm. so, the miracle of the opening of the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah. You know, power over nature, power yes. over the flesh. Yes. Uh, and so, so those are things that demonstrate uh, uh, God's power. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, the spiritual gifts operated through Paul and the mighty deeds accompanied his ministry. Now, notice the super apostles were braggadocious about miracle signs and wonders. Have you ever heard Paul ever once in any of his writings that we've studied so far? Has he ever bragged about a miracle? No. Mm. Why, what was Paul's responsibility? To spread the word. Spread the word. What automatically accompanied that spread? Miracle signs and wonders. Right. Okay. All right, so no claim was made by Paul to have performed miracles. The super apostles are claiming it, but why? Attention. Right, right. Recognition, recognition for themselves, okay. yes. So rather, um, Paul doesn't make any claim for miracles, but he does say that <coughs> there, they, these things were done among you by whom? by the power of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, not by me. It wasn't in by Paul's hand. It was by the power of God that right. these things right. were done in the in the uh, mm -hmm. midst of the church. So healings and other supernatural signs were done in the ministry of Paul all in all the various cities and locations he yes. went to. And they confirmed his ministry. Right? Mm -hmm. But did he brag about them? Did Never. he promote no. them? Never. No. All right, think back. Did Jesus promote his? No. 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 What did he actually do? But he actually told him to don't talk about it. He said, don't <laughs> go show yourself yeah. to the priest. Right. Don't talk to anybody. Right. You know, this is almost as if this is between us. Mm -hmm. You know, don't mm -hmm. uh, do what you need to do by the law, but, you know, uh, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so. Even though the charismatic gifts worked through Paul's ministry, the Holy Spirit did not exempt Paul from suffering. That's correct. He's still human. He's still dealing with sin issues. He's still human and, and living in the sin nature. And, and, and yes, all these charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit are operating through Paul. But did Paul? does that mean that he's super spiritual and he, he's exempt from pain? No, He's indeed. Exempt from suffering. No, no, indeed. So, unlike his his opponents, Paul never let the ministry of miracles get out of focus. Mm -hmm. He recognized his ministry wasn't a ministry of miracles. His ministry was a ministry of the word, yes. evangelization. Okay, and what automatically followed? Miracle signs and wonders. And what was that key, that key word that you consistently used through this book? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Paul recognized that, that many gifts, um, not just healing, are needed. Amen. Such Amen. As the gift of faith, gift of wisdom, Hallelujah. gift of knowledge, gift of teaching, yes. gift of generosity, gift of prophecy. All of these were gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they were needed just as much A Amen. as the other gifts. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so think about this now. What are spiritual gifts for? Are they for personal use and gain? No, indeed. No, no indeed. They're for the whole community of faith. Amen. Right? Absolutely. It, they build up the faith yes. of others. Yes. So these gifts are not restricted then to just exceptional individuals or uh, the, these super charismatic right, personalities. Right. 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 Now, remember, what was one of the accusations earlier in the book? You're not much to look at. <laughs> yeah. You're a bully. Yeah. Your writings and your voice and your characteristics of who you are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, it's almost as if they were just trying to think of anything. His speech. Yeah. They, they said your speech is not, that much, is not that great. You're not eloquent. Okay. All right, so they were attacking him. But Paul recognized, you know... I may not be trained in, in, in Greek uh, oratory skills, but the, but in my weakness of who I am, Christ is strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and so 
some people had made these grandiose claims in regard to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Primarily, these people we're talking about are the super apostles. Yes, okay. yes. All right? But the gifts are not for the purpose of exalting those whom they operate. It's not, if, if, if a gift operates in you, it's not to lift me up. Or Amen. Up. Amen. Amen. Right? It, it's to lift up Christ. Yes. Okay? So yes. it's in teaching. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? If you knew my background, you knew my testimony, you would know that how in the world did that boy ever get behind the pulpit? How did that boy ever get behind the lectern? Okay? You don't know my story. You don't know my background. All right? I know it, and I know who I am. I can say like Paul, I'm nothing. I know where I was, and I know who took me where from where I was and where I am. So I recognize that it's not me, and I'm not saying this to be braggadocious. I'm just saying, if you knew my story, if, you knew, if I had time to tell you my testimony about my education and my learning and my disabilities and all that kind of stuff, wow, you can do that now? Yeah, because of Christ. Because not of him. Because of me. Amen. So you Amen. see... He takes our weaknesses and turns them into strength. Yes. Why? Yes. To bring Him glory. Absolutely. Glory. Absolutely. And that's why these super apostles, they were bringing themselves glory yes. Yes. and not honoring God. Yes. Okay. All right. So when a man lays his hands on us in prayer, there's no power in the hands. Okay. They're flesh and no more. But God can minister through those hands. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's amen. What amen. Recognizes and Yes. So the biblical view of gifts is that they are manifestations of God's grace and power, and they have a servant role. Wow. Very good. The gifts have a servant role. Yes. Okay. Not a master role. Yes. That's good. A, ma a That's servant good. role. That's good. Okay. All right. Another thought. Gifts are bestowed on Christians so that they may serve others. Yes. And build up the church. Yes. All right. Yes. And let's, let's, it's not in our notes, but let's go to Ephesians. Skip a few pages over and go over to uh, Ephesians. Um, uh, bu, 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 where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Uh, what is it you're looking for? Apostle Prophet. Read the gifts. Talks about the gifts. Oh, come on. I, I had it marked in my other Bible and I didn't bring it in here. All right, where is it here? Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Four, chapter four. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, verse 11, chapter four, Ephesians 4 11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. All right, look at verse 12. Verse 12, there you go. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. That's where this verse comes, this saying mm -hmm. comes from, Ephesians mm -hmm. 4, 11, 12. All right, so the purpose of the gifts are not to elevate the individual. Yes, correct. We are a servant. We are to have the gift to serve Amen. others and build up the body of Christ. Right. The super apostles were using the gifts, so-called gifts they claimed, to build up themselves so that others could serve them. Yes. Okay? And not build up the church. They were actually destroying the that, church at Corinth. That is correct. Paul saw through the facade the masquerade Amen. And remember, in an earlier chapter, he said, they are the children of Satan. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Okay. All right. Now, in verses 13 through 18, he talks about having uh, freedom from greed. So the Corinthian Christians had been treated the same as all the other churches uh, that Paul had visited and or established on his missionary journeys and written letters to, with one exception. And that one exception is that Paul had not been a financial burden to the Corinthian church. Right. Now, if you remember your history from way back, we started this class, the Pauline Epistles, in February 2018. And in the first week's lessons we talked about is that Paul had written multiple letters. But when we talked about the Corinthians, 
we know that we have two letters in the New Testament that are first and second Corinthians, right? Yeah. So how many letters did Paul actually write to the Corinthian church? Do you remember that? Four. Paul actually wrote four letters. We have first and second Corinthians. Technically, we have the second and fourth letters. There's one that's called the previous letter. So if you go into 1 Corinthians, he'll say, in my previous letter, which means mm -hmm. it was the real first letter yeah. to the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. But in 2 Corinthians, he also talks about in another letter that he dealt with harsh discipline, yes. which yes. was between <coughs> the 2 Corinthians, which we call 1st, mm -hmm. and 2 <laughs> Corinthians was actually the fourth letter. Okay. Now, we have the letters God intended us to have, mm -hmm. right? But what I'm getting at is Paul had said in all of those times, what I'm getting at is he wrote four letters. That means Paul has a long history with the Corinthians. Yes. And in that long history, he remember, he's the first one that brought the message of the gospel to them. Amen. Church. Amen. Okay? Right. He has a large investment. He lived there for 18 months. Mm -hmm. He's been back and forth. He's, get, he's telling us here he's going to make a third trip. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. In all of that time, he treated he treated all the churches the same, except he did not financial be a financial burden to the church at Corinth. Okay. So in the in their uh, in their midst, miracles. Okay, in their midst or in their presence, miracles had been performed. But the Corinthians, through the super apostles and their accusations, were actually saying that they felt like they were inferior to the other churches because Paul had refused to take support from them. See how twisted their argument is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was no sign that he thought, because he refused financial support from them, they were saying it was a sign uh, that he thought less of them. So they felt offended. But see, that's the false teaching Correct. of the apostles, super yes. apostles, the false, yes. apostles, false apostles yes. that had indoctrinated incorrectly the Corinthian church. So he wanted, Paul wanted to be reconciled to the church. So remember what he said? Well, forgive me for that. I, I want to be reconciled with you. Forgive me for that. Verse 13, please forgive me for this wrong. Pardon me for saying so, but then I guess fake news is no new thing, is it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Because what is fake news trying to do? Paint an unclear, untrue picture. Untrue picture. Right. So, with some irony, Paul says in verse 13, forgive me for this wrong. In yeah. other words, in other words, what Paul is saying is, that's not my intention. And he gives us an illustration that I've already mentioned. We'll come back to it. But he's really after that reconciliation again. Yes. So he says, forgive me. It, he, he may, I don't know that he's saying it tongue in cheek, but he's yeah. saying it yeah. with, with ironic, irony that, that, forgive me. I want to be reconciled to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. In other words, who's reaching here? Paul. Who's reaching? Who's trying to reconcile? Who's trying to set the record straight? Yes, Paul. Paul right. So the the apostle Paul is really interested in their spiritual warfare. He's not interested in their money. Amen. Okay. But the false apostles had so deluded the minds of the church. Wow. That yeah. they said because he doesn't take your money, he don't care for you. Now, notice that his interest. Paul's interest in the Corinthian church was really unselfish, not selfish. Correct. Okay. So for a third time, Paul planned to visit Corinth. And on his upcoming trip, he said, I'm not going to make any change in my financial policy. I didn't expect you to be a burden when I came to you pr prior in my other two visits. I'm not going to expect you to be a, financial, uh, be a financial burden to you in my third trip. So in other words, he's sticking to his pattern right. and to his ministry. Mm -hmm. right? He would still not be a burden to the church, and he wanted the Corinthians not their possessions. In other words, what was more valuable to Paul about the Corinthian church? Their, 
their soul, their, their spiritual, spiritual welfare, not yes, their possessions. That is correct. Not their possessions. That's correct. So Paul really desired to cultivate and maintain a warm fellowship with them, and he really wanted them to have a strong, full commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. These false teachers, we said it several weeks ago, but these false teachers were actually spreading a heretical message. Yeah. When I say heretical, I mean a heresy. Right. Meaning right. that they were saying that you had salvation through works of the law. There you go. Okay. So that meant that they were denying Christ, yes. the person of Christ, the yes. death of Christ, yes. the resurrection of Christ. Yes. So that is a heretical doctrine. Correct. You cannot be saved without going through the cross of Christ. Amen. Okay. Amen. So Paul has begotten the Corinthian church. If you go back into King James and you look in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, all right, and it says that Adam begot, Adam uh, knew Eve, mm -hmm. in other words, mm -hmm. new meaning sexual intimacy, right. and, and as a husband and wife, and that he begot. In other words, he became a father. Right. He sired a right. child. Right. Okay? All right. Paul had begotten the Cor Corinthians as Christians. In other words, He's the spiritual dad, and they're the Amen. spiritual kid. Yes. Okay. So as their spiritual father, he didn't expect material returns for nurturing his kids. Amen. 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 All right. So Paul's financial policy is really justified by his simple analogy from human life. Children are not expected to provide for the future security of their parents, but the parents for their children. All right. Many of us have probably been raised with the idea that we are to leave our kids an inheritance. Whether that's financial, material, mm -hmm. and most definitely spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay, most, That's right? the most important. So children are not expected. So the basic necessities, clothing, food, shelter, they're not normally, provi not normally provided by the children. Okay, Parents have the responsibility of providing these for their kids. Now, mm -hmm. when your children become adults and they marry and leave home, then they are to provide for themselves and for their children and their home. Right? Mm -hmm. right? But notice the apostle was prepared to accept his full responsibility for his kids in the faith. Right. right. So he wasn't going to take pay, financial support from the church, because he was there not to gain, but he was there to support and to provide, build up uh, in, what was that phrase, in their most holy faith? Yes, okay. yes. So the apostle was prepared to accept his full responsibilities for his kids in the faith, and more than anything, he desired to see them give their wholehearted devotion to Christ. Amen, not amen. Not to this heretical doctrine. Right. Now, in verse 15, we see that he planned to spend himself for their spiritual good. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't have a lot of possessions. But what he did have, he was going to give to them. Amen. And that was his time, his energy, and his love. He didn't have much else, but he could sure give them that. Okay? And so gladly he would be spent and would spend what he had for his spiritual kids. The verb spend here in this verse is dapaneo. That's the Greek word. And it refers to Paul's manual labor to support himself and his ministry. So that spend here has a deeper meaning than just taking money and exchanging it in a transaction. Okay. It's Good. talking about his manual labor. He will spend himself, not his possessions. Good point. Okay. So uh, he was ready to, to spend himself, all of his time, his energy, mm -hmm. his, uh, uh, who he is, his character, nature, and personality, and labor untiringly to get the job done on their behalf. So no matter, basically, no matter what the cost, he was eager to help the Corinthians. Here's the problem. They didn't understand this. They mm -hmm. may have before the false uh, teachers came in. Yes. But now many yes. of them are doubting that. Yes. They've been brainwashed uh, to accept this heretical doctrine. Well, if, if he loved you, he'd take from you. He would, he would take your financial support. Mm -hmm. And remember, Two weeks ago, we said something about that. Do you remember what it said? If Paul had said yes and accepted pay, yeah, yeah, then that would give them a precedent so uh -huh. that they could demand pay. Correct. Okay. 
Correct. Paul was out thinking them. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said their mm -hmm. motives are mm -hmm. all for selfish reasons. Mine are for spiritual nurturing reasons. I'm not going to take from them financially. So he also knew. He also knew he's a smart man. He also knew yep. that if he said yes, they would use that against him. Mm -hmm. Yep. And demand from the people. Yep. So. What really disturbed Paul was their ungratefulness, the ungratefulness of the Corinthian church. Um, he lavished his affections on them. He says, that, remember that verse we just said, it seems like the more I love you, the less you love me. It, that's what he's talking about. He had lavished his affection on them. Um, and usually, love will kindle love. Okay. Right? It was it was most unnatural for them to lessen their love for Paul since he was, was sparing no effort to serve them. It's almost as if they said, okay, we'll serve us more. They were mm. really ungrateful for it. So this is an indication that the influence of the, of the intruders was working because their affection toward him had cooled. Yes. Okay? Yes. And, and less love on their part, though, didn't stop him from loving them just as a parent keeps on loving their children even Amen. when they rebel. Amen. Right. You ever you ever had a child do a, <laughs> make a decision you didn't want or rebel against your choice? Did you as a parent stop loving them for it? No, indeed. No. no. And neither did Paul. No. With his spiritual kids. Paul did not bluntly condemn them. He doesn't openly and bluntly condemn them. But he did leave the way uh, open for his ungrateful children to change their mind or change their attitude and to meet him with love. Notice what he says in um, uh, verse 15. It seems even though the more I love you, the less you love me. The more mm -hmm. I love you indicates I'm trying. I'm trying to reach you. I'm opening the door for you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I want you to love me back. Now in verse 16 through 19, uh, and we'll probably take this point and finish. Notice that Paul notes, he said, I'm not taking advantage of you. Paul had not been a burden to them, and that was undeniable. No one questioned that. The super apostles didn't question it. The, the Corinthian believers didn't question it didn't question it. They knew he hadn't been a burden on them. Okay. That was actually one of their points. You haven't been a burden to us financially, so you must not love us. But Paul turns it around and says, you know, I have it, but I haven't asked for money for myself. In other words, some had said, because you haven't asked us, you've been a real crafty fellow. In other words, remember that word in the New Living that said you've, been, you, you've done it for, with trickery? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. His, his adversary said that you were using Titus and others to get money from the church. In other words, you didn't ask for it, but you sent Titus and this other brother to ask for it. So you would get it mm. under the table. You know, another way. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, uh. in other words, using him to get the money and thus took them by trickery, which is dolo, I mean dolii, and that means by guile or deceit. All right? This attack, though, is this is an accusation by them against Paul. And this attack is directed against, really, the raising of the collection of that offering for the poor Christians in Jerusalem, which we talked about in chapters mm -hmm. 8 and 9. Paul talked about that for, uh, I mean, 7, 8, and 9. So those, those chapters Paul talked about, an offering. Um, and so Paul knew that, think about this for a minute. If you are one of the super apostles and you're looking for personal gain, then you don't want the church to take an offering and send it a thousand miles away to poor Jewish Christians uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where do you want them to send it? Yeah. To your pocket. Right. Okay. So so they're trying to say that Paul sending Titus and the others to finish and collect the offering Man. is a, actually a trick mm. by Paul to put it in his own pocket. Okay. So isn't that isn't that attacking his character? Yes. Isn't yes. that attacking his spiritual character? Yes. Okay. Right. In other mm. words, he's he's being deceitful. He's trying to pad his own pocket. He's going to meet you some. He's going to meet Titus and his other brother somewhere <laughs> in another city and take pockets of money. 
Great. That's day. why Paul said mm. in those chapters that me and you and several others of your choice will escort this money to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. okay. So Paul knew the charge was false and he dismisses it. Right? Uh, Paul had not exploited, or and this is a planoke teo, which means take advantage of them. Through Titus and that unnamed Christian brother. In other words, he had not taken advantage of them by sending Titus and the other brother. We keep saying other brother because if you remember when we studied that chapter, Paul didn't tell us the name of the brother. He just said this other brother. Mm -hmm. He didn't give us his name. Some scholars think they may know who it is, but it's, it's not uh, that important. Now, these men were honest. In other words, Titus and the other brothers, they were honest, and they made nothing out of the church. In other words, made nothing means they made no profit. Paul sent Titus to the church to minister with the same financial policy he had. Yes. You will not be a burden to yes. the church. Yes, yes. Okay. So Paul, too, had precisely the same spirit of integrity, and he acted in the same way. Titus was a spiritual son yes. to Paul. Yes. He trained him in his own methods of ministry. Mm -hmm. He didn't accept pay, neither did Titus. So the apostle had defended himself against the charges of these super apostles, and the saving of his reputation was really not his concern. Paul wasn't concerned about his reputation. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. What he had spoken was in the sight of God. He said, I, I know I speak the truth Hallelujah. in the sight of God. Hallelujah. God is my witness. Yes, yes, amen. So Paul ha argues his case, uh, but not so much before the Corinthians as much as before the judgment bar of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul makes his case against the super apostles and defends himself. All right. He's doing it before the Lord, as well as the Corinthians. Think about this for a minute. Look at the next statement. It was God's standards that he was trying to satisfy. Right. Who is Paul serving? He serves God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and in his service to the Lord, he's got to serve the Corinthians in the same manner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if, if, if he were to seek not seeking to justify himself in their eyes, then why did he even bother to speak? That could be a question, right? Well, if you're only defending yourself to the Lord, you're not really trying to justify yourself in front of the Corinthians' eyes, then why did you bring it up in the first place? His reply was, everything we do, dear friends, is for your strengthening. All right? Oikidomes, which means your building up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, Everything that he's doing and saying here to them is, is so that his record before Almighty God is clear and correct. Yeah, and that's the next point. His aim was to clear away all the obstacles, and I just realized there's a, the graphics in the way. Let's see if I can, oop, nope, wrong. I can't do it in the setting, but there's a graphic uh, in the way. But the, the, the claim was to clear away the obstacles. Uh, the troublemakers were really trying to hinder the Christian uh -huh. fellowship, hinder uh -huh. the church, yes. and to create a climate in which differences could be resolved. There you go. Paul's trying to resolve it. He's trying to bring, what's, what's, what's the one word summary of 2 Corinthians? Reconciliation. Yes, okay. yes. So, his controlling desire for reconciliation, a relationship that's rooted in God's grace, and it's characterized by mutual love, trust, and respect. Mm -hmm. okay. That's not what was going on here. Okay, so next week we're going to pick up uh, uh, at verse 20 and 21. We'll finish out chapter 12 and go into chapter 13. So we'll pick up at Roman numeral 2C. Okay, and then we'll keep going, uh, and uh, we may finish next week. I don't know. We'll see. Am I going the right way? Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right, so we'll pick up at Roman numeral 2, letter C, uh, apprehension about the spiritual condition of the church. Um, 
And then in chapter 13, we're going to go into Paul's final advice uh, and then his final greeting. All right. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Um, you. Have a good uh, week. Uh, if anybody uh, in the classroom or watching online, if you have any questions, text me. My, my number is 757-580-4924. You can text me your questions or you can email them at nrush at wowcenter.org. And if you have any questions, send me those. Uh, and uh, we'll deal with it next week. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you. Have a great Amen. week. Amen. God bless.